thank you thank you jeff for taking time to talk all things mean spirited um i guess my first question would actually be you know about how the film came about i mean you've spent i think the la best part of the last decade working in shorts what was it about this this idea and this film that prompted the the leap into features um, so actually, this is actually my third feature, okay. strangely enough. Um, I It's my first feature as a solo director. Right. Um, I co-directed with my good friend Ariel for the past two features. And but yeah, this was this was kind of like my first, I guess you could say, like my debut feature in a lot of ways, because my shorts, I always kind of either took a producing credit if I was helping direct or um you know, it's like the first time I was like, okay, like this is just like me and in that sense. And it was very difficult. <laughs> it was really hard, um, but it was really rewarding and the team was incredible. And uh, the guy I wrote it with, Joe Adams, was kind of like my, you know, my partner in crime a lot of times on set just because I was also acting in it. So, you know, the insecure actor side of myself would often be like, ooh, was that good? Like, did I do a good job? And like, no one's there to be like, yeah, you did. <laughs> so you're just like, you know, usually that would be like the director is like, hey, that was great, great performance. And I could do that for other people. But for myself, I was like, I think maybe, you know, someone tell me it's not awful. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, uh, I got advice a while back from um, a good friend, Joel Petrikis, who is... A really talented filmmaker and he kind of was the one I met him in Maryland at a film festival and he was the one who was like you should start doing features because kind of people start to take you a little bit more seriously and kind of it just kind of opens up a different uh, playing field I guess in this crazy industry and yeah I kind of took his advice and for better or for worse have dived in. I mean, it's funny, you know, you mentioned that you're you know, acting as well. I mean, that was sort of leads me nicely into to one of my other questions is, you know, you are, you know, you're directing this, you co-wrote it, and then you're also acting in it. How do you sort of comp compartmentalize all those different roles? Uh, I'm one of like the, I guess I'm similar to like people who who also do it. I think I'm a little bit different in the sense where I actually really like it um, because I think it gives you like a different relationship with the actors and I am my personality type is just I want people to have fun on set and I want it to be fun especially if we're going to make something that's in the spirit of comedy and being in the scene as well it's kind of there's like a usually there's a separation with like the behind the camera part of the process mixed with the people who are in front of the camera and I think there's this really fun balance of being in the scene with people and seeing what they're doing and kind of having a different rapport with the actors to kind of try different things and make them feel more comfortable to fail and try strange things and so I really love that part it's hard in just a sense of like being prepared as an actor the way that like other actors have time to prepare I don't have as much time in a sense mm -hmm. because it's just you're being asked a million questions so it's always kind of there's a there's a, a struggle there that I find really hard and I need to get better at to be honest. And what was it about Bryce that made you decide that you did want to play him? Uh, it's like total opposite of me as like a person. I've, I'm more like Andy in the film. Uh, Andy is very much written kind of a mix of myself and Joe and the worst parts of Andy are kind of like my insecurities and my like fear of failure and my always never being satisfied, always wanting something more in life. And thinking if I just get to here, maybe I'll be satisfied. And that's kind of like the spirit of the movie that we kind of chased with Andy. And that's very much me and my, you know, struggles in life. And Bryce is kind of like the picture of like who I've always wanted to be, but I've never been in my entire life. Like, you know, Bryce is someone that like was probably cool in school, was probably, you know, had no trouble dating growing up and all those things. And like, never have I ever related to that. And it was one of these things where we kind of sought other people at first for a few possibilities to play him. And then it just kind of worked out where, uh, to be totally frank, it was just cheaper if I did it. But it, you know, it helps that you do have the acting background. And in the film, Bryce has become sort of uber famous. And this is why these friends have sort of lost touch. And he's he's become famous for playing uh, Thunderman. You know, how was it living the, the superhero dream? It was, you know... 
my maybe only opportunity to be in the superhero universe. So I was, I loved it just because I've, you know, it, it was kind of loosely based on like the WB superhero shows mm -hmm. like Arrow or uh, The Flash. And I have like a sore spot for those shows. I like kind of secretly love them. And I just thought it was always like something as an actor. I was always like, oh, if I could just like be on like a WB show, that'd be like the greatest. Like I would love that. Like, you know, you could walk down the street, people probably wouldn't recognize you, but you'd also like have a blast while doing it. And so for me, it was very fun. It was very fun to like play kind of a like an evil, maybe evil, spoiler, uh, presence in the movie. And I really love that because it's just so different than myself. And um, yeah, I just, I have a blast playing like a jerk, to be honest. It's like my dream to play villains in the world. <laughs> Well, they do say that it's that they are, you know, the more fun character. I mean, you say, you know, he he is very much the the bad guy in in Andy's eyes. You know, these guys used to be friends, and then they've they've grown apart, and there's a lot of resentment and hostility. I think that one of the things I really enjoy is that the film does focus in on these long-standing relationships and kind of highlights how sometimes as nice and as long-standing as they are they're probably not the best or the healthiest for us which a lot of times in films and television you know those friends like from kindergarten and from birth and stuff are seen as the ultimate friendship bonds and you know above everything else you know why did you decide to sort of subvert it and show that sometimes they're not as picturesque as, as we would like I think it's um that's awesome that you that you pulled that from from the movie by the way that's uh I personally have an affinity for nostalgia and uh, these, it's almost this like fear of growing up that I personally uh, struggle with. And I like want to hold on to these uh, memories. And I think we often, when we think of nostalgic memories, we often glorify them mm -hmm. and think about them in like this like dreamy sense. And a lot of this movie is kind of based on a real trip that I took with my my best friends from high school who are still actually my best friends but we we glorify these like past memories as like oh that was amazing when we like broke into this like abandoned hospital and didn't realize that we probably could have died because there was crazy things in there and it's I wanted to kind of or Joe and I wanted to explore this um this idea that Andy still kind of holds on to this friendship for better or for worse just because he wants to kind of live in the past he doesn't want to realize that his future is not what he always anticipated it being and that that's kind of the core of it and it's kind of based on you know I always dreamed of a different future for myself and I kind of am where I am and that's just the way life goes and Andy is he's a vlogger you know he's got his you know show it's, it's front and center you know the, the film is essentially a, an episode of the show and the last few years have seen a shift towards these type of protagonists you know what do you think makes them so so interesting um, to explore stories with because I guess you know 10 20 years ago the protagonist was a writer or an author and now we are seeing more and more come through where it is these sort of social media stars yeah I I mean, it probably started for us as like a, ooh, like he's a vlogger because like it's a fun world that we initially thought of. And it kind of also just became this bigger thing of just like the question of the type of person who films every aspect of their life. And I think that's a really interesting thing in life. I watched like some documentary, I think it was on Netflix of, uh, it's a really sad documentary where I think like the the husband or the wife I forget which one uh, murders their kids and was kind of loosely saying like they were they were the type of people that would film everything for social media so there's a very there's a lack of realness you mm -hmm. know like your first time seeing uh, or I'll go use this as an example like uh, my wife and I just had a baby who was three months old and I had my video camera because I wanted to film aspects of it but at the same time I also wanted to like experience this as life and I think there's an aspect of vlogging that it's like I need to film this and therefore you're not actually experiencing real life and I think that's a really interesting world and it's probably why a lot of people are shifting towards it because it's kind of like the grizzly man uh that documentary the Werner Herzog mm -hmm. one kind of is one we watched a lot 
leading up to this too, just because this question of like, what do you film? What do you show is really intriguing to us. And that leads me nicely into, into my next question. You know, it's sort of, it, the film fits within the, the found footage screen life sort of sub genre. And historically, one of the big issues for me at least is, you know, the camera positions and that have always been a little, a little difficult, but here, you know, there's lots of lots of variety. You know, how did you you go about sort of expanding and creating a, a more dynamic camera camera style? Uh, well, I that's awesome that it comes across that way because uh, we actually we did work really hard on it, and a lot of people may not may not feel that way, and that's that's totally cool. But uh, Ken Wales, Kenneth Wales, who's our DP, um, we talked for basically the three months leading up to it every day and just kind of I I shot list every frame usually like it's just like something I like doing just because it there's too many uh chaotic things on set that it feels like nice to have a plan and then we would always like throw that plan out the window when we get on the scene because we're like ah it doesn't work anymore um the way we kind of did it was we would essentially always have this wide master and in the shot list I would always line the script with like a, you know, A camera, B camera, and we would like label it with different colors. And the A camera was always like our, our main frame, which we would have control over. And then the B camera was kind of like, we'd have to direct the actor holding the prop camera where to point it because, and sometimes they would, they would dictate it and they would help dictate how we kind of go into our second camera shot, which I guess is kind of hard to explain on a, without seeing the movie, but it was, it was a challenge for that aspect. And then I think for us, we really wanted it to feel cinematic because Andy's kind of like a film enthusiast blogger. So we wanted him to kind of have a sense of the way the camera should look nice. And then halfway through the film, I think we sort of shift towards a more traditional cinematic feel and vibe, hopefully. And that's kind of what we wanted. And um, yeah, it was really challenging. I like really don't love having like the mockumentary or, or found footage like boundaries on a film and mm -hmm. I thought this was like a really cool challenge because I really wanted to uh, kind of find a way to balance both and hopefully it comes across a little bit. Yeah I mean I don't know if you're familiar with it but it reminded me of a, an, an earlier episode of um, Supernatural. It's one called uh, Ghost Faces and it's like Sam and Dean stumble across this group of like paranormal investigators that film everything and Sam and Dean sort of unwillingly become part of the episode. And it's kind of got, it, it had some, some sort of like other, the fun aspects of that episode to it as well. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love that show. So I actually probably have seen it, but probably a while ago. <laughs> Cause I yeah. I mean, it, it means like, it's like, well, there's like what, 15 years of Supernatural. And I think this was literally like series two, series three, okay. maybe. So it's like, it's a while ago. Um, oh, I love that show though. That's a brilliant show. <laughs> And we were, you know, we're discussing the film in the lead up to the uh, to the screening at, at Fright Fest. Fright Fest celebrates everything that encompasses the dark heart of cinema. So I sort of have to ask, you know, what is, you know, what's your sort of favorite genre film? You know, what what genre film excites you? Oh, uh, I always everyone always makes fun of me because <laughs> our, our last film when we were like uh, doing press for uh, called Mass Hysteria, which is on Shutter, it's Someone asked me what my favorite horror movie was, and I said Hot Fuzz, and I was like ridiculed for months by my friends who like still to this day are like, "Oh, your favorite horror movie is Hot Fuzz, like a cop action movie." And I would I would disagree, but I think my favorite genre film. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but Silence of the Lambs. I watch like maybe once a week. I truly adore that film. I think it's brilliant. I like the music. I listen to the music all the time, and it's just like Anthony Hopkins is just brilliant in it. It just top to bottom. I think it's like a perfect movie. So I'd have to say that. I also love The Exorcist, but. Yeah, both, uh, all, you know, all great choices. I mean, a hot fuzz, I can, I can sort of see some of the, some of the, the horror elements. I mean, for me, it's all about the point break reference. So I'm probably more aligned with the, the action yeah. side of it, but um, I can, I can sort of see, you know, the town in the way that it's almost a little bit, I guess, in a, in a weird way, like Wicker Man-esque, you know, there's all these yeah. people village there okay so I, I sort of see you see your point um I think I'm right in saying that you're you're coming over for the festival that is correct I am beyond thrilled I cannot wait actually so obviously outside of you know getting the chance to to share the experience of, of sharing this film with with an audience what are you looking forward to about the festival what are you excited to get involved in 
Um, I've made a spreadsheet and I've filled my days with movies because I'm just like excited to watch movies for like three or four days straight. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, honestly, it was, it was the hardest part was kind of picking what to watch. And I ended up doing like a few main stage screenings, but I was also like, oh, these are probably movies that are going to come out on the sooner side. So I was like, oh, let me go to like discovery screens, which still may come out on the sooner side. But I have just been on Twitter kind of interacting with a handful of filmmakers and I'm excited to see other people's work and honestly just support the genre because it's uh people have been really kind to me over the years and I think it's like a really important thing to see movies in person and celebrate the fact that we're able to have a live screening this year I'm like so thrilled for this yeah definitely and I guess obviously Fright Fest attendees are you know they're they're making their own spreadsheets they're trying to figure out what they're going to watch you know why should they take a chance on your film um because we're so fun and we're going to be there with maybe a few hats to pass out and some t-shirts um no but i think uh the movie is really hopefully intriguing and i think will you know be a really fun experience it's a very funny movie hopefully for audience goers so if you want something on the lighter side of the genre i think we would be a great pick and i think there's so many good films so i do not blame anyone if they you know see whatever they see but i think it would be great to connect to anyone who's interested in our film whether they come to the screening or not and you know we'll we're starting our tour here so i think we'll have other opportunities for people to see it and hopefully online somewhere well i wish you best of luck with the screening thank you kat thank you for taking the time